This is a behind the scenes look of making a year seven uh, PowerPoint for a practical lesson. So there's some major disadvantages of making PowerPoints that they take a lot of time, but as you continue you get some a lot of speed up for it. So this one is looking at separations and the first thing we do in separations is we make a mixture. And the mixture uh, is the standard solution mixes. There's two types of mixes, solutions and suspensions. Uh, we have the solvent of water and the solute of either calcium chloride or another chemical we're going to add which is sodium bicarbonate. You can see on the left here I've got a um, ChemDraw program which is an online program for uh, drawing things chemically and I've just drawn the setup which we're going to use and selected a um, PowerPoint demonstration for it and I have to label this diagram. So I'm adding the label lines at this stage, getting the right size. And I'll go across labeling all of these. Now you should just use a ruler and pencil. And in this case, uh, for clarity, I'm actually going through the beaker to indicate the fluid. And this is magnetic stirrer. So calcium chloride mixes OK, uh, sodium bicarbonate. Uh, it takes a little bit to dissolve when you've got some high concentration. So the solvent is water, the solute is calcium chloride, which is your DAC rib, and um, sodium bicarbonate, which is a sodium and a carbonate, hydrogen and a carbonate. And it's used in cooking, known as baking soda in Australia. We're going along here, putting the title of the diagram at the top. And uh, we're now going to start labelling the key. So uh, we've labelled due to Australian or patent convention labelling, having a key. And this allows you to at your leisure in a much more clear diagram um, explain what the components are, sizing them a bit better, getting the legend down. And we'll eventually get a legend here. We're now looking at what the solute or the powder is that we put in. The spatula, conical flask, and it's on a magnetic stirrer. So you particularly need a magnetic stirrer when you have um, solutes which are not so soluble in the solvent. And um, I realise here that I have to label the solution separately. There's a conical flask that doesn't have the solution in it at the moment. And giving it another letter so you can see the ease with which the letter a legend process works. Underlining it, and here we go. Okay, I have to get to the next part. So this is where we make the solution. Now we're going through the complex thing of getting two beakers of the two solutions. And now we're going to get them together and heat them up. So I'm going to do a diagram which is in stages, so a diagram which is now stretched in stages. You're not allowed to do this in year seven, but for clarity in this PowerPoint, I'm going to have different steps here. And you can see going through the different steps, the progression now. I only have a hot plate here. I'll make that into a microwave later on. So we get the two solutions, heat them up for a short while. They work a lot better when they're hot and uh, we'll pour the two solutions together. Now we've got to get the solutions from a larger source. The two solutions from a larger source and we'll use a syringe to syringe out exactly 15 millimeters each. So on this side I'm going to um, have the solution here. Draw the syringe up and I'll reduce the amount in here so it just indicate that we're going to transfer it. So I'm taking a few shortcuts here so that we can actually show later on uh, the process. So the top process, top step, um, is bro broken into two sort of halves, taking the syringe out and including it. So we've got a chemical reaction here and we're going to start labeling the different steps here. So this is a combination um, diagram and a process, showing you the process. Previously it was easy to see that you just add, add um, solvent and solute together.
but this one is showing several steps you measure things out. And we're going to attempt to put this in a microwave. Just going back here to get our um, um, solutes, which is the solid parts, so the calcium chloride, and on the other side we'll get the sodium bicarbonate. And I'm telling you that it's aqueous, that is now a solution. So a little AQ there means it's aqueous. Bring it over here now. In this, if we were to label it, it would have too many labels. So in year seven, you have to label everything, but for this prac, it's just best to label what you're putting in. I'm saying you're putting 15 milliliters in here. And I'm starting to label a few other things. I'm telling you that's a microwave oven. And then you can heat it for 20 seconds in this small microwave oven. That will increase the temperature and increase the reaction rate, so it'll get a nice big fizz from it. We'll look at the reaction a bit later on. So that's chemical reactions. Now we're going to look at what happens here when we do it. So we look up an online chemical balancer and we start to type in the reaction. So there's an online chemical reactor. Now I've made a mistake here by putting the three outside the brackets. The there's three oxygens, carbon, carbonate, but I cleaned up later on, calcium carbonate, which is chalk, salt, so calcium chloride, which is a damp absorber plus baking soda, gives you actually chalk plus salt, that's a pretty good chemical reaction, you can see it's balanced here, so it's telling you, putting two little numbers there, you don't have to worry about that for year seven, that's just to show some of the year tens who might be looking at this, getting up here, so I've cut that and I'll put it in to the uh, PowerPoint to say it's balanced. And I'll um, go along here and start the filtration. We want to get the chalk out of the salt solution. So the chalk will come out as a suspension from here. So you'll see it as a powder. It won't be clear. It'll go cloudy. And that cloudy means that there's things which are not dissolving. I've got a clamp here. I'm going to have to look at trying to... I'm not used to this. It's taken me about 20 minutes to actually do all of this, but if I'm a bit faster, I'll be able to actually do this um, in a shorter time. So I'm just not practiced here getting the, the retort stand around. Retort stand refers to a stand for a retort flask. There's a particular flask called a retort flask. The retort's got nothing to do with the stand itself. So we're going to pour in the um, solution and get some filtrate out here. It's largely done here. Uh, yes, I'm just looking for some container here because you want to wash it out with some solution here. So you'll, you'll want to wash out your beakers and everything to make sure you get all the residue. That's what's called. Uh, so you get residue left and filtrate is what's actually been filtered. Now I'm over here I'm focusing on actually labeling the components. I have to stop. So I've placed the uh, setup on the PowerPoint slide and I'm not labeling everything this time, I'm just labeling the key aspects which is the uh, washing solvent, the solution and suspension, we're going to get the difference between the two of them, and the location of the residue, B, or question C, and the filtrate, which is over here. And we'll identify all these various things, the solvent flush, to wash everything out, the solution plus suspension, the two things, we want to separate the solution from the suspension, the suspended particles won't get you through the filter paper. And uh, things that go through the filter paper are called the filtrate. We're now going to go to the next section, which is where we boil off the filtrate. Get a glass stand and a pipe clay triangle here, which supports the stand. It's interesting, you know, there's a, a good way of drawing a pipe clay stand triangle from the side. So you see three pipe clay triangles, the top view, the side view, and the, well, it's called the whole view. But a um, filtration. 
evaporation basin which you'll place underneath there. Remember to heat this very, very carefully, very, very slowly. You don't want to heat this up too much. We'll drag this across. So then you slide, get across. Oops. We've got it across now. And we're going to label. So that's where the residue is going to happen. Evaporation basin. Like a triangle, the uh, tripod, the, there should actually possibly be less separation between those part plate triangle and the tripod. Remember, this is a schematic 2D schematic diagram. The Bunsen burner is probably too elaborate uh, for you. All you have to do is two lines for a um, Bunsen burner. So <coughs> inside the Evaporation dish. I just got to work out what I'll call that inside there. Inside the evaporation dish, I'll call it the residue after it's evaporated, obviously. So we put this all together, and you can see 